Wow, I've really been in the mood to paint something whimsical, loose, and chock full of color. Here's a super quick overview, and if you'll stick around, you'll see lots more detail on how I did this painting. I started out with a loosely sketched pencil drawing. I really encourage you, instead of tracing, try drawing. It'll help you get a looser look. And I decided to outline my drawing with using a Liquitex Basics Medium Magenta. I usually use something stronger like a Quinacridone Magenta, but I really like this color. It was a little softer. I like the places at the end of the painting where it was peeking through. It wasn't screaming at you, but it added some whimsical color. So you might want to give that a try. After I had this painting sketched in, I wished that I had made the objects a little larger because it felt like just way too much excess space on the canvas. So that's why I ended up putting in a window in a drapery panel, which I absolutely love. I think it made the painting a whole lot more interesting and whimsical. I used to paint lemons using cat yellow medium, and then I would lighten the highlight area with white. When I took the photographs for this painting, I intentionally used a strong light source so I could have some strong shadows. I used burnt sienna to start that dark shadow, which may feel like it's too dark, but as I look back at other paintings, I see that I wasn't getting my shadows dark enough. I really encourage you as you use darker colors for shadows, just make sure you get a nice transition. You can use a slow dry medium or as I was doing here, I was just working very quickly. Of course, I've sped this up a lot, but I was still working pretty quickly. And then just adding some white for highlights and softening those areas as well. One mistake that I used to make a lot when painting white is I would use titanium white for a white object but a much better option is to make a soft light gray. So I'm using my favorite gray, which is from Burnt Umber and Ultramarine Blue. And you have to just kind of keep working with it. If you have more blue than brown, it'll have lean cooler, a little more brown will lean warmer and just keep playing with that until you get it light enough, get a light side and a shadow side. And I have found that to look a lot more believable than just using white and then putting a little white and ultramarine as the shadow. But do what you like, but that's that's been my experience. I try to reserve titanium white for highlights and sparkles. So everything else, I take it down a notch. I'm using cobalt blue with some white to do the blue on this little piece of pottery. And I'm using a flat brush and I'm just putting down some marks and turning the brush a little bit. I was just looking at my reference photo. I'm not trying to paint it exactly, obviously, just trying to keep it real loose. And so the cobalt, I use it more pure and dark on the right side in shadow, and then I add more white to it as I come around that, that curve. And then in the middle, I sort of do a little transition where it's in between those two colors. I like doing blue and white. I used to feel very intimidated by that because I just felt like, oh my gosh, I'll never be able to get it to look realistic. But it's, it's amazing how loose and impressionistic and painterly you can do your marks and it, it'll read right. It's, it's just, it's become a fun thing for me to paint. So here I'm going back over that top again and I'm just darkening that. And again, it's going to get a little lighter as it moves around to the left highlighted area. A lot of fun to do. Give it a try. Here I'm doing the block end for the bird's nest. And I'm using burnt umber to get a really dark side. I also use some burnt sienna and some raw sienna 
as my other colors on this nest. So I, the way I do a bird's nest is I just do a block in. I get my shadows, my darks in first. Then I go over and do the lighter areas. And then I go, I drop back to smaller brushes and finally even a liner brush at the end and put some twiggy pieces, twiggy marks in there to make it look a little more realistic. Here I'm just continuing this block in. You'll see me switch over to the Burnt Sienna. I love these three colors and then the Raw Sienna. I think these three colors work really well together. I'm using the same colors for the leather books. They just, uh, I use these for animals, for shadows. They're just, that's a great, if you want to have some kind of natural earth colors, those three are, are wonderful. Just make sure you get your shadows dark enough and get your lights light enough and it'll read correctly. That was another thing I used to feel a little intimidated about painting leather books, but I've gotten over that. <laughs> I've realized you can uh, just put some marks down and, and it'll read correctly. The viewer will know what you were trying to do. Now I'm starting to lay in some greens on those little Lady Jane apples and I'm using an olive green, a sap green, and cad yellow to lighten. Just getting some variety, just again, being mindful of where the shadows are, where it's catching the light. Use a little more yellow. I tried to use yellow on these more than white because the white does make it a little cooler and chalkier looking. And just dropping in some shadow colors. I'm using a little angled brush to do those. I'm intentionally trying to preserve some of that pink outline. I just love that effect. May not be your thing, but um, and I'm adding a little extra pink in. Why not? In real life, this little bottle is green. So I'm just using the same greens that I used in the apple. Just getting good color harmony. I'm not overthinking it. I'm just getting some dark spots and light spots. I have found with painting glass that I, it helps me to have a reference photo, which I did for this, but most of the time you're going to have some super dark spots and some super light spots. And if you keep everything in a middle value and don't have those extremes, it, it tends to not read well and it's not as interesting. So I'm just dropping in. I, I'm looking at my reference for part of it, but part of it I'm kind of making it up, just trying to get a variety of colors in there. One thing that I think helps a bottle look more realistic or a vase is that circle that's in the bottom. If you'll look, typically there'll be some super dark spots and some really strong white reflections. So um, if you do nothing else, try to get, get some drama going in the bottom of that circle. It'll help. I like to use something like a yellow oxide or yellow ochre for the shadows on daffodils. And I love CAD yellow medium uh, and then with some white. If you'd like to see, I ha actually have a full course on daffodils that I've just put out. I'll put a link in the description box below if you'd like to check that out. There's a, a little free video on YouTube about daffodils that you can also go in and kind of get a good preview of that. I painted in the beginnings of a super simple little tablecloth. I used ultramarine blue and white. I used a little more blue on the right on the shadow side. And notice that I didn't do it straight. I let there be a little wrinkle in the fabric so that I can put a little shadow line underneath that. I've switched over to a large brush. I'm using a lot of paint on my brush, very gestural strokes putting in that table. You don't want to paint it like you're painting a wall. I, I just love, uh, I'm using the burnt sienna. I've also got some of the raw sienna on there. I'm picking up different things as I pick up my brush and just trying to put in, of course, I'm getting a little tight right there where I'm having to cut around, but I'm trying to intentionally use big, loose strokes and not end up with just a solid color, but end up with some variety and some distinctive brush marks. 
here you're gonna see me just laying in some raw sienna on top of that just again just trying to keep it loose I love the color harmony of this painting I'm always trying to reuse something that I've used multiple times I'm gonna end up using the cobalt blue on the tablecloth for the pattern there as well so just Again, try to keep it interesting, don't get too tight, and don't drop down to a small brush. The bigger the brush you can use, the looser that painting is going to read. So here you're seeing this brave move of <laughs> putting in a drapery panel with using that same magenta, again, keeping that color harmony in mind, using a big brush, and I love um, orange and hot pink together. I think that's a beautiful color combination. So I'm just putting in the magenta, some white, and the orange and just seeing what happens. I, I just had a lot of fun with that. I went back at the end and um, put in some darker spaces so it would look like there were folds of material. But other than that, this was put in really loosey-goosey. Now you see me putting in a window. That was another decision that I made. Uh, because I think I was sitting in front of a window with the drapery panel, although that window did not have the divider mullions in it. But I'm using an angled brush, and I'm just, I thought about where do I want this to, to land. I didn't want to go through the exact center of anything. I was trying to make it interesting, get it a little off center. And I'm just using titanium white to do the highlight, the, the edge of the mullion that, is the lights hitting. And then I went back into our gray color that I used for the bowl, and I put that as the bottom line to look like the shadow. And, you know, I did not use a ruler. I didn't do anything precise with this. I just freehanded it. Again, if you want your painting to look loose and whimsical and impressionistic, the more that you can do freehand without getting specific straight lines, the better it's going to look. I really had a lot of fun with this window. I was really making it up as I went. But uh, windows in the background can really add a lot of interest, particularly to a still life painting. It just gives your eye something in the background. Trying to figure out what's going to go in the back of that window is always a bit of a challenge. But I just took some of the same greens, the same blues that we have in the painting, again, keeping color harmony. And I'm using that same angled brush and I'm just going in and dropping in a little of this, a little of that. I'm not trying to overthink it. I'm just trying to keep my brush marks real loose and real varied. You'll notice there I've got a little more yellow green. The, above it, I've got a little more uh, white mixed in with the green. It's a little cooler. Again, just trying to get a variety. So when you look out the window, it looks like there's just a mixture of foliage. I'm going to go back in and add some of our blues, the ultramarine and white that I used in the tablecloth, and that's going to represent sky. There were certain objects when I first started painting that I felt like I had to trace it or I had to use a projector because I would never get it to look right. And one of those things was eggs because eggs have such an odd shape and it really is hard to get it precise. But I've really gotten over that. And I want to encourage you again, if you like loose paintings, if you like a more painterly, whimsical style, freehanding it, even though it might look a little wonky, Freehanding it is going to give you that effect that you're wanting. I'm just using, um, I'm going back into just a, a cream that I made. I don't really remember how I made that. I think I used the same colors. I think I used titanium white and I put a tiny touch of burnt sienna 
just to warm it up and give us a little more of a shadow. So that's what I did for the eggs. Then I went back and put some dotting on them later, but don't, don't fuss with them too much or you'll end up with this loose painting with these super tight eggs in the middle. So you, if you've decided to do a loose painting, you need to keep it loose in every part of the painting. Here you can see where I've added a little dotting to it. So I've dropped down to a smaller round brush and I'm just going in and putting in some loose marks to let you see that there are some twigs made into this nest. You don't want it to look so super smooth that it doesn't look realistic. Now I'm going back in with ultramarine and white. I'm very quickly, loosely putting in the border on that piece of cloth. And I'm just looking at my reference and I'm just using a flat brush and I'm just doing some big strokes. I'm not overthinking it. I'm using a variety of strength of the ultramarine and white, letting it get darker and lighter in spots. Just very loose flower there. Just trying to make it look balanced, but not overthinking it. Again, super, super loose. There's just such a tendency with something like this to get, get it tight and precise. But again, if you like a loose look, just don't overthink it. <laughs> don't use too small of a brush. Don't use it like a pencil. Hold it between your thumb and your forefinger and you won't have much control over it. And hopefully that way you can maintain that loose look. Just be mindful of where your shadows are and where your light source is. Let things have the appropriate value. Little loose dots and stripes are a good way just to fill in some space if you need some ideas. Felt like those little apples had gotten too dark, so I'm just going back in and lightening those up a little bit. Being a little more mindful about highlights. I often, in a painting, sometimes I completely finish an object and then I don't go back to it, but a lot of times I'll go through do pretty much everything I'm going to do to each object, but then go back at the very end of the painting and just hit those highlights one more time. I really like very distinct lights and darks in my painting. I like to exaggerate them. So a lot of times going back in with highlights is just something I do near the end. I wanted to show you where I'll often go back in on a bird's nest at the end and get a liner brush. And that enables me to put in some really fine, delicate lines, just little twiggy pieces that are coming off, adding more texture. Here I'm going back in with a super big brush and I'm just putting lighter areas and darker areas on that drapery panel to make it look more like they're folds of fabric. I was careful not to do just a white streak or light pink, but to go back in, I want to keep this painting super colorful. So I'm using the oranges and a little yellow again mixed in to, to get that lighter rather than using white to lighten. If you'll stay tuned, the next video coming up is my introduction to painting daffodils. I hope you'll like that one as well. Thanks a lot. God bless.